All right, so now I've got 20 microfarad capacitor. It's like 600 volts. I'm using the same toroid as before. I think I bought some fairly large ones. Uh, it's probably going to take a while to get them. You can see I've only got four windings on this guy. <laughs> it's because uh, that's really all it needs. Uh, so before I had a much larger inductance and uh, I was stacking as many small caps as I had to get about two microfarad temporarily. So now I've got sort of the opposite. I've got a much larger capacitance. I've dropped the inductance uh, way down. I'm not sure at what point this thing's going to saturate, but I'm pretty sure it will at, uh, if I go pretty, you know, fairly high power. Uh, before I had a couple 60N65 IGBTs in parallel as the main switch on the uh, buck. Uh, but for some reason, one of them failed kind of playing around on a coil this coil here i think it failed once i got to like 100 volts i'm not really sure why it failed so i've got this fairly large brick on here only one of the switches on here is good so that's the one i'm using it's a 200 amp you know it's not anywhere near as fast but you know hopefully it should be fine but at the same time i should have been able to use those uh IGBTs. so i'm not real sure what happened there but again i need to get this filter right so that could be part of it and i've got the ramp circuit in here now pretty much same setup but it's got its own uh, battery in there so basically i've got the uh, output that's feeding the uh, gate driver here for the uh, buck then i've got the other enable output which that's just kind of bootlegged on and it's traveling down through opto isolator and then over here so that's my enable input basically interrupter input for this uh, tesla coil so this coil was made to be a ramp setup I've kind of been playing around with it over time. It's been laying around. I kind of forgot what I was doing with it, but it seems like it should sort of work out for this, at least for testing. So now that is my load. And uh, the way this is set up is I've got this supply, which is going to supply the logic right here for the gate drive. Then I've also got power coming out, feeding a little inverter through that variac, which is powering the uh, buck. And uh, you know this is, has its own battery. Then I've got this separate supply right here, coming down, just powering the logic for this circuit. While I'm pretty sure this is not really going to work, bringing that voltage up, I can at least kind of get some idea uh, and see that more or less I've got the equivalent of what I've got going on running this from the wall using the uh, mains ramps. But I can pretty much do the same thing with the DC pure DC now. Uh, you know, just using this ramp, right? So I'm not going to get any crazy long arcs or anything. Um, but theoretically, if I was to be able to run this at the highest voltage, I should be able to, at the very least, equal the type of uh, pretty good ramped arcs I was getting before straight from the wall. Obviously, I would need a dual resonant Tesla coil to really get the crazy long arc. So it's probably going to take me a while to work all that out. Uh, right now, I'm at the point where I kind of feel like uh, if I played around with this a whole lot, I will pop something. I'm not sure what it's going to be. Uh, this was the biggest problem for me, actually. Once I put the Arduino inside this box, I realized it just really wasn't working how it was before. So before, I had a problem where it seemed like the output would kind of stutter at times due to interference. And I realized that was pretty much because um, you really have to kind of like terminate a lot of the inputs on here. So cut this on, cut this guy on, you buck right now. I'm going to cut this on. Kind of a slow blink. I have noticed, of course, that uh, when I first power this on, I get that initial pulse right there. So that's the uh, pulse. The only uh, isolation I've got right now <clears throat> is between the uh, ramp generator and the interrupter input. So I'm just going to put it about right there. And just bring the voltage up a little bit. And let's see. Uh, tune around this is the PLL so I have to kind of tune it a little bit so you can see that uh let's see, let me cut this off see it's got basically uh, sort of a, a characteristic ramp shape to it um, 
And I've actually got the on time down pretty low. So that's a fairly short ramp. It's actually uh, less than 10 milliseconds. It's probably fairly close to a mains ramp. When I start um, increasing it, I start to lose that, that real ramp for uh, several possible reasons, I would imagine. So basically, the more or less the, the kind of output that I would get from this circuit, uh, just basically run it, running it straight, regular, interrupted from a uh, you know big DC bus cap, it would be about the same output, um, but you know it wouldn't naturally form these little ramps like that without actually using the ramp circuit. So I can tell it is doing something. Apparently, it is ramping to some degree, right? So that's kind of cool. Let me cut it up just a little bit more. So that is, uh, it's probably like 60 volts. So that's nothing crazy, right? But I'm not sure what killed the uh, IGBT setup in my last one. So basically what happened when I was running it before was I was running it. I just kept cranking it up and up and up. And eventually it got to the point where I didn't hear anything explode or anything, but you know, what'll happen is if your switch fails on the buck, then you've just basically got, you know, your output is no longer switched. So you basically are just running straight off your DC bus now. Um, so what I noticed was clearly the output changed. So the output got a whole lot worse, basically. Let me put it that way. So the fact that it is ramping, you know, kind of lets me know, hey, that is, it is working. So that's kind of cool. So if that thing were to just suddenly kind of uh, start spitting out a whole lot more branchy arcs and the output didn't quite look as, as nice, then I'll know maybe that, okay, well, I basically just got straight DC output at all times on my buck now. And if I cut it up a whole lot, then uh, it'd probably start working that little inverter quite a bit. I can actually start to hear the Variac spit out the slightest little hum at that point. And again, this is all from the battery, so I really can't push too much crazy power. Right now, I'm just kind of running it, testing it out, seeing uh, what overheats, what might fail. You know, what I'd mostly be worried about is some type of a uh, short from an explosion from those capacitors being fully charged and then uh, blowing something up under dead short. <laughs> So yeah, that's how it kind of runs on a little test setup with that particular coil at the low voltages. And again, yeah, it's pretty low. So really, <laughs> all the components I've got here, aside from this fairly small 
toroid here or uh you know, overkill for uh doing what i was just doing there so i mean it's not like i really need to uh heat sink that it's not going to get hot some type of voltage spikes would be what i'd be worried about but this kind of general setup that i've got now seems to be all right again isolation here to here is something that i still need to do i tried to use some optos i pulled from some boards but then i found out they were way too slow it is what it is um, but again i probably won't be able to do a whole lot till i upgrade this uh, filter here probably going to end up moving this away to a kind of like a cleaner setup and then um, scope it from a battery scope um, try to keep everything isolated straight from batteries because right now everything is running straight from batteries uh, i've just got this earth ground on the coil itself um, i don't know i might so i might just kind of keep cranking it up and see at what point maybe something might fail and uh what what kind of output i get there